All right, all right, all right. Let me start recording. Bam. Okay, so while YouTube notifies you all of my existence, and I am able to join my own stream. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, everything is set up, and we are ready to go. Awesome. Hey, we already have someone in here. John Gillen. What's up? How is it going? Okay. So, this week... We don't really necessarily have a goal that we're going to, you know, meet or do, but I thought a really cool theme would be something that just came up in conversation today with a friend. And that was a punk rock um, skunk girl <laughs> with little, like, flyaway hairs. That's what I'm going to be focusing on today. That's going to be the the theme, and let me put it on the other screen so you guys can actually see me. Bam! All right, all that stuff up. Okay, so we are going to be drawing skunks, a skunk character. So we gotta figure out how to draw skunk. And then we have to draw them in a punk rockin' situation. So that's going to come with um, its own situation. So we gotta figure out how punk rockers dress. Or come up with a really close stereotypical look for them. Which I have a good idea in my head because I've watched a lot of movies dealing with that sort of, you know, like stereotype. So, but the first thing that we gotta do. And... This is going to be to create a skunk punk rock uh, girl. This is going to be for a female character. Okay, it's going to be our theme today. All right. So the first thing that we got to do is we got to learn how to draw a skunk. Uh, I've been practicing a little tiny bit. So I have come to the conclusion that they are little tiny beanbags with a little fluffy tail. With little round cute ears and a really fun stripe pattern. But it, the overall look of the, uh, the actual animal is very close to that of a uh, of a chubby cat, like a um, ferret, maybe. So it's very, very close to something like this, right? So we're gonna play with that. And we gotta make some uh, real life references, which I have right here. So I'll do a couple more real uh, to life you know, sketches just to get the shape of them. And then we're gonna find how to humanize these so that we can make really fun like cereal box characters and you know like stuff like that mascots for like you know uh, companies t-shirt designs any of that that require an animal will normally require them to be able, uh, doing human uh, things. So, I'm gonna show you guys kind of how to turn that, you know, little knowledge about the animals and how to turn that into like really fun illustrated characters. So, first things first, let's uh, make this a little bit smaller because we don't want it to take up half the screen. Move it to the side. Okay, there we go. So, we have that. Now, okay, what are we going to have to draw for a skunk? Let me look at my references again. And from what I'm seeing, they're really cute. Like, their faces are adorable. Their faces look to be kind of like this shape. 
Then they have little round ears. And they're little. I think that's way too big. More like that. Little ears. Uh, their noses are kind of boopy. That's the only way that I'm going to be able to describe it. <laughs> and then they have a little stripe right in the middle of the nose. And then it goes into a big like patch of fur in the back that's white. It seems like they have a little bit of a gap between here, and it seems to be like a current thing with, you know, several ones. So let's see that. A little snout, and their face is a little bit wider. Okay. So they have that, and then they have little pearly. Curly eyes. Now, when we have that, and then we start adding the color, they kind of look like little bears when before you like add the rest of the detail. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, they they kind of do. It's, it's really cute. Then we start adding color, or shading. And then when you start adding the rest of the animal in, then it starts looking more like the animal. But that's funny that they kind of look like that. But when you look at them from the profile, let me find a picture. Their skulls are very much like. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, essentially, they're little puppies. They just kind of look like little puppies. With the snouts being a little bit more pointy than a normal puppy. Like, that's what I'm going to kind of base this off of. And then they have very interesting, you know, stripe patterns. So, knowing that, now let's go in and start uh, stylizing some, you know, uh, little skunk designs. Uh, and see if we can come up with some fun ones. And let's try to replicate like a real, a real life ones first. So they had a snout. And it curved up. And then they had little pearly eyes. And then it had the hair. Gonna add a little bit of an exaggerated curvature to the back, just to so the whole entire back, sorry. And then their bodies are kind of chunky. the tail to the other side. That's just for reference. Now we have this and we start adding the actual colors of the... Let's see if we actually make it look like a skunk. Okay. 
But instead of using black, let's use like a gray. They also have a white belly. And then the tails is mostly black with a couple stripes in the white. So if it is what's behind them, that's kind of what it Okay, I kind of like that. I'm digging that. Hmm. Why is it not? Oh, it's because it's the wrong layer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just adjust some features a little bit. Okay, I'm kind of I'm okay with this generalized uh, look, but let's draw a couple more just for fun. Maybe this one we start with the body, and then we go into into the shape of the head. No snout coming out. Are there snouts? No, yep, they're rounder. So they're not as pointy. At first, whenever I'm drawing anything, uh, I like drawing everything as a uh, super simple character at first. Uh, literally just The simplest that I can draw it without losing the the idea of it. And then from there you you adjust. You add, you build, and then you eventually get to you know to what you want to draw. No, their snouts don't go up like that so much. So let's uh, redraw that one. There you go. And when I'm doing these types of sketches, this is what I would call exploratory design like work. Uh, so this is just me trying to figure out how to draw what's in front of me accurately, right? It's for it to make sense to me. Uh, in this case, I'm finding what basic shapes will consist of the, the appendages of the character. Uh, if those are looking good, if that's looking accurate for what type of animal I'm trying to convey. Uh, for example, you have different arms for animals. Uh, you can have like little like arms like this, where it's a very little hand and mostly arm. I use those for like uh, little rodents and squirrels and you know, little animals and little critters like that. Now, if you need something with a little bit more, uh, like, rawr, you can do the same shape, which is a very simple beanbag shape, but then just not draw into a, don't draw it into a point, just draw it like a little blob, and now you have paws. Rah. 
right? Uh, other little like things that you can do, you can do hoofs as well, the same thing. That's the bean bag again. Uh, and that's also the way that horses legs kind of like bend down. So it's really, really easy to draw like horses legs. It's just, you know, a longer bean bag. That's Okay, so now that we have kind of figured out, I'm still going to try to move it because it's still looking a little bit weaselly to me. Like, not quite as cute as I want. But that might be because I'm not exaggerating the stripey enough. Maybe you got to look into it a little bit more like a badger. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Okay, and then a big fluffy tail, like a squirrel. Now the eyes are, the eyes I think are gonna be playing a huge role in this. So, I'm gonna have to figure out a fun way to draw the eyes. Now, do we design the eyes with small eyes? That could work for like a animated character or something like that. But if we're gonna go for a mascot, we in the normally uh, the people that design for this sort of stuff, uh, we tend to go with really big eyes. And the whole reasoning behind this is because it's characters with really big eyes are much more appealing to kids they are much more likely to sell the products that you need and if it's just for straight up that exact reason that people do it like that characters like tony the tiger and tricks rabbit and stuff like that are great examples of that pretty much anything like any character that's ever been made for cereal is a prime example of what people look for in uh in marketing stuff for this sort of stuff. Okay. So now we have some eyes. They can be like, oh, what are you looking at? To, oh, look at my eyes. They're so cute. You know, like bambi is type of eyes. But for actual characters that are going to have uh, different poses and headshots, we got to make it easy for the production teams that are going to be using this character later on. So when we're simplifying the character in itself, we even have to simplify it to a very extreme. So maybe even just adding eyes like that, where it's just, a tiny little oval with uh, a highlight. So it'd be something as simple as this, in my opinion. Would be some of the most ideal way to just represent a character that is going to be created and represented over and over and over and over. Maybe a little bit. And that's just personal preference. That's not uh, an industry like necessarily standard, but I prefer characters that are nice and simple like that for that sort of situations, or when I'm simplifying characters even more. Okay, so now we have that. Let's add a little bit of that same color. Oh, I added white. <laughs> Uh, in case you guys are wondering, yes, uh, actually nobody asked, but the pinup book is for sale. 
and it's amazing and it's awesome and it's in my Instagram and the link is directly in my link in bio. Uh, it's ten dollars for the ebook. I promise you guys, you'll love it. Like I, I don't, I don't guarantee that often. I really don't. But I am so proud of that book. Uh, I guarantee you'll like it. So. If you have not picked it up and you enjoy my art and you guys actually want to support me, a really good way is to purchase any of my sketchbooks that I have uh, out right now. The pinup book or the Coffee Break Doodles book. That is by far the best way to support me. Plus, <laughs> I promise you, you'll be inspired by that. Essentially, uh, the pinup book is just my whole path to becoming like a person that's capable of drawing pinups. Um, that was like the whole idea behind it. So I've been saving like drawings for like 10 years. So it's going to be really cool. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of how to draw a raccoon cartoon face, now what we're going to do is we are going to come up with uh, the punk rock, the, the girl punk rock look. So um, I'm just going to make a basic character shape and we're gonna use that as a template. Something really simple with a really dynamic pose. Alright. That's going to be our base template for our character. Which essentially is just a beanbag given underwear to determine where the legs are going to come out. And then the legs are just another set of beanbags, just without the fold, that lead into another set of beanbags. <laughs> that is the foot <laughs> so if you think things as beanbag shapes uh here hold on. think things like beanbags beanbag 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 if you start thinking of things like that it's gonna be really easy for you to to break down characters very simple uh once you master that little shape it, it, everything becomes so much easier. All right, so we have that's going to be our basic pose. We have a little bit of a shadow and maybe scale it down a little bit. And then add a little shape for the head. Okay, so this is gonna be our base template for our character. Okay. So now that we have that, let's scale it down. We want the character to have a relatively big head. So that's the reason that we have the proportions that we have. The character is going to be a cartoon character and essentially does not have to conform to any sort of uh, you know, like weight principle, but we still want to make sure that our character looks balanced and that everything looks right. So that's why I like working with the posing first. And I try to figure out the posing before I do any sort of detail. So in this case, I know it's going to be something with a tail and it's going to be a female shape. So I'm going to take the approach that I took to anatomy in my other videos so go and watch my other videos it makes things so I can explain things quicker so whenever you remember and go back to those videos you'll realize very very quickly side note a beanbag shape is the perfect way to break down a torso because the upper part 
essentially gives you your rib cage. And then the lower part, if you give it underwear, <laughs> gives you where your hips and your legs and everything else goes. Like, it could not be an easier way to draw things. Okay? So, go back, watch those videos, and I promise you, you'll learn how to draw everything. Because everything is a beanbag. Everything is uh beanbag <laughs> and if you even the faces are beanbags shoulders and biceps are beanbags biceps and forearms are beanbags forearms and hands and then fingers so everything is a beanbag and you can draw so many cool things by just thinking like that Maybe that's what I should call my book. <laughs> Everything's a beanbag. Uh, but, okay, let's get back to the pose. So we have our pose for our head. We're going to... I, we know a couple things are going to be needed in this pose. We're going to need a tail. So might as well just map out the tail right now. And we are going to want it to be gloriously large. Because it's a female character, and uh, I grew up with uh, Animaniacs and all those, you know, sort of shows that always depicted skunks and cats with like Pepe Le Pew and stuff like that have gigantic tails. So I think skunks should have gigantic tails. Plus, they actually have really big tails compared to their body and size, so I'm going to keep it like that. We're also going to treat the tail as an object that has width. So, what I mean by that, how does a tail normally work? No, there are some tails that are just cylinders, right? Like dog tails and uh, like, you know, cat tails that just, they're like cylinders. But some animals actually have a tail that's a little bit wider. So it's more like a like a drape or like a like a leaf that's coming down right so it's not a cylinder that's going in it's more like something that has a definite bottom instead of just being a cylinder so when you get a situation like that in which i want to make it like that for this character i would draw the tail instead of a cylinder going out just drawing it like a palm leaf or something coming from the top it would have a definite top and a bottom so the moment that it curves to the other side you should determine that at least in your sketch by giving it a darker part okay so as a template we're just going to leave it like that Oh, one more thing I should probably map out is that she's going to have a snout. You know, it's going to like come out in some sort of fashion and the bottom of the face is going to be relatively flat. So as long as we keep it within that realm, everything should work out fine. Now, if we take this and then we just start mapping out like the basics and that's just casting the center line and the eyes the ears would probably be right here okay so if that is our basic skeleton now we can go back in ghost that out make a new page a new layer and now we can play around with that a little bit. Uh, let's say we want her to be really like angry and like moody. So we can draw that directly into her facial expression.
<laughs> okay, that that's interesting. That's interesting. Kind of like that. But I think it needs more. It needs a little bit more. So we're on the right path, but not quite. So keeping that into consideration, we still want the character to have sass, but maybe not just being angry. Uh, so I'm going to try to explore a little bit more of the sassiness with the facial expression again. I'm gonna bring the head a little bit down. And I'm gonna give it more of a natural curvature. Like the body of an animal. There you go. So I'm liking that a little more. I'm also going to try to accentuate that back curve that animals have. And then just, I'm gonna try to figure out with that. I'm really enjoying the way that this is looking. Like I remember, they look like little baby bears. So I know that if I want this to look like a little baby bear, I need my ear to be around here. That means that the other ear would be around there. The jawline is kind of low on the face, so it'd be around there. They did have boopy noses. I don't know if, let me see if doing that is gonna make it look more so. Hmm. 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 Maybe that does make it look more like a It'll be determined in a little bit. I'm gonna add the stripe. And I'm gonna go for a solid stripe just uh, at first. Just like I remember that Bambi, I think Thumper, Thumper only had that. Uh, but anyways, uh, a simplification of it is what I'm gonna aim for at first. So we have that. Then we're gonna have the character be like that. If we wanted the character to have real animal anatomy, it would be more like something like this. We would use that back curve as the, the hip because we're drawing a female character, remember? Let's see. Okay, so it's interesting. I don't necessarily think we're gonna draw super uh, long, sexy legs on a uh, little skunk here. We still want to keep it close to its proportions, so we might just have to modify things a little bit and see if we can get that to work. So by forcing perspective, I can make something look taller without really adding much more to it. So in this case, I made this leg a little bit shorter, extended this one a tiny bit, and now it looks like she's standing in a power pose like bah! Gonna make the hips a little bit taller, give our bean bag shape uh, its underwear. Okay, so now we gotta come up with uh, what she's gonna be doing with her arms. Hmm. Hmm. She could be like that. And then 
the other one. Hmm. Well, how are we doing something here? We can totally make this. <laughs> I mean, she is a punk rock character, right? So, anti-establishment. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go there, though. Okay. All right. This is this is okay. I I am all right with this general concept, and she's gonna have something here. I don't know what it's gonna be. Uh, the white belly. Boom! 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 up a little bit we'll figure out where the tail would come out of which would be roughly around up here like we said it's more like like a folded sheet of paper or that and you can trace that middle part all the way around and adjust as necessary so in this case we have a little bit of an empty space right here so we're going to make it extend to there. Then I'm guessing, oh yeah, we got, we got to add some little fly hairs next to a very long haircut on the side. That was like one of the caveats. gonna have like and then this side's gonna have some little fly hairs <laughs> but I'll make them a little bit more tasteful then of course you're gonna make the eyes very cute since they did look like kind of like puppy eyes so we're gonna have to treat them with a little bit extra detail all right so in general we have that now let's see what do we need to change here? I think the proportions of the head need to be a little bit different. The head needs to be considerably bigger than the rest of the body. So I need to go in and I need to change that. It's gonna be like that. Now I'm also noticing that the body is a little bit too, uh, too sexualized. Uh, for a, just a little animated character. So we're gonna have to change that a little bit too. We're gonna have to make it a little chunkier. And you know what I've noticed right now? There isn't that many uh, female serial characters. Like, there isn't, is there? If there's any, um, let me know in the chat. Because I don't think there is. Alright, so beanbag, heavily on the bottom. And that's how we're going to represent our female like shape. Let's change the pose a tiny bit. I'm going to keep the same proportions. That we had before we're just going to change the way that the legs go a little bit too try to create a little bit more depth all right so maybe keeping it a little bit more simple like this will be a little bit better Okay, 
because then we can just have the limbs coming out of here and we can give her like a vest she can have a little white spots and she can be walking towards us maybe with like some converse or something Yeah, I like that a lot more. Okay. <laughs> I think that's just looking more metal, huh? No. <laughs> or not. I mean, I guess like um, scene girls are like kind of like punk rockish, right? Like are they like I always like the look of uh, the scene girls okay I'm gonna look at some comments while my hand rests cuz uh starting to cramp up okay Zumarella Zumarella hey how you doing uh, let's go into the other view for now uh, hey what up hi hi uh, breezy J what's up noise hi September fall draws you inspire me to make art every day that is awesome that is my goal as long as that keeps happening i'm probably gonna keep doing it uh helisandro crepel hello rodgon nice week to all you in streaming well thank you for wishing us a happy week no use i'm watching this video and redrawing my pfp right now what's pfp uh amir hello man hello dude um uh, cool I might buy uh I don't know how to pronounce that in I think it's Japanese oh I see so a tail is not a bean bag <laughs> it, it yeah I guess it's not it's more like uh like a ribbon uh Radgon making things look simple since I don't even know when <laughs> Luizo tunes and Nadia Hi man, been a minute, but I love your videos and you seem so sweet. Keep doing you. Ah, aren't you a sweetheart? Thank you. Uh, nice profile picture. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's continue on the drawing. Now that we're caught up on oh Cameron Smith. What's up? Okay. Alright, back to our little character. And now we have like a really cool hairstyle that we can follow through and kind of looks like uh, like storm a little bit right now. And then we have the other hand. I don't know what she's going to be doing, but she's going to be doing something with her hand. Okay, let's see. Analyze this a little bit. Look at it back and forth. Scale this down a little bit. Okay. And then look at the things that we like about it. Look at the things we don't like about it. And then we're going to redraw this again with that idea in mind. What happens with what I do a lot and it happens a lot with things that I have to be really, really good at. I'll draw this over and over and over and over and over and over until I get the right thing that I feel like exploring a little bit more with. And that sometimes takes a while. It's not always easy and it's not always uh, nice and simple. Like, for example, in this one, I need to make sure that I can actually make the character express herself. Right? That's also another part of drawing characters for merchandising or t-shirts. It's making sure that you can actually make them look appealing and be able to like do all these facial expressions and stuff like that. So it's not just enough about finding out how to draw the character appealing. It's finding out how to draw the character appealing and then still actually being able to work with it. So that's why you get a lot of characters that just have like a side mouth and they're like overly simplified 
you know, because that's an easy character to redraw over and over and over. So we're gonna have to apply that sort of type of principle to this character in order for it to be easily reproduced and also to me, I think it's very important that kids can draw it because uh, that's like a huge core essence of uh, the cereal box characters, you know? So we're gonna aim for that. So we're gonna go with a lot of like smooth, simple lines based everything on like animation principles. So we're gonna go with very oversimplified, you know, like eyes. And we are going to still base everything off the beanbag shape, but we're going to try to like have to modify that a little bit. We're going to move the eyes a little lower. <laughs> okay, so right idea. But since it's a skunk, it really does need that stripe in the middle, and that doesn't conduce itself to that. So we're going to have to go with a little bit different approach. But then in order to make it look like a female character, we got to go into stereotypical things, like making things a little bit pointier, a little bit slenderer. And utilizing a little, uh, like, tiny things like giving the character more eyelashes and stuff like that. You know, those little tiny things tend to work a lot when it comes down to having to identify a character as a, as a stereotypical female character. Uh, please, <laughs> I'm not trying to be, like, political. So I don't mean anything I'm saying as a attack to anybody or their gender. I'm just referring to that just strictly for drawing purposes. All right, so we're gonna go with a slightly more profound look. Uh, here's gonna go around the back. That's my phone because I always forget to put it on silent. So let's put it on silent. This is my time of the day reserved for my followers. So, you guys get priority. Okay, so little by little, we're going to just find our shapes. Even if they don't fit within the same exact shapes that we already drew before. Um, it's all about adaptation and learning how, you know, something simpler might be better. And in this case, I think we found a good solution. There you go. There you go. That works. It's simple. It's stylized. And it's going to allow me to make the character look very feminine by having uh, the very pointy cat eye thing at the end and that also is a part of uh, the styling of a lot of uh, punk rock goth girls I believe <laughs> I don't really necessarily know that many like women from those scenes so <laughs> feel free to correct me and tell me I'm wrong Okay, so we have our face, and I'm liking it. It looks cute. And we're going to have the faces. Let's see, hold on. If 
that's the face. The face would extend like here. So we're gonna kind of like use real like anatomy and then just kind of cheat it like anime style. Like it's not gonna quite go into the mouth, into the top of the nostril, but it's just gonna I cover at the edge. So it's still gonna look okay. And then you can have like a little fang or something. Yeah, I like that. Uh, she is a punk rock girl, so maybe piercings. But we'll think about uh, accessories after. Okay, so now we have that. Uh, that looks fine. If we're going into it. Okay. Now she does have the little stripe in the belly. So, okay, that. Okay. Now, what do we want to do with her legs? It can be like a power pose. Bam. Like, bam. Which. You know, kind of looks kind of cool, I guess. Could be more of a relaxed one. You know, they're just like standing around. Could be an action pose. You know, her jumping or something. Hmm. Or if we play a little bit with perspective, we could make her like smashing something on the ground. Hmm. So the possibilities are pretty endless here. But, hmm. So I'm looking at her. Uh, I'm going to give her some eyebrows. Just to give her an extra level of, uh, of naughtiness. <laughs> or to say the least, uh, I needed a little bit more expression from her face. And then with this, I can probably figure out a better facial expression for her or a better body posture for her. Let's see. What would a punk rocker be doing? Drinking a beer? <laughs> uh, I am very, very not cultured. In that sense. <laughs> okay, let's uh, see if that works. Not quite. And sometimes whenever I can't find anything, I just start drawing shapes. There you go. I, I found what I, I need. She's just gonna be chilling on the ground. One hand behind her back. And then the other one over here. She'll have a soda. A bendy straw. Also, I'll have Starbucks. There. Shoulder, shoulder. Okay, so one thing that I found out about uh, shoulders and the clavicle is that uh, it's an incredibly easy part to draw if you visualize it in a certain way. 
And this is a side note anatomy uh, lesson just because I found myself using that right now. When you are looking at shoulders and the clavicle, it's good to understand that you have a rib cage. And the rib cage in the front, there's this little dot right here. Bam! At the base of your neck, you'll find a little divot. That little divot is going to be the key to everything neck wise and shoulders okay so that little divot is the connection point for your neck muscles so these two neck muscles that go from the ear down to the neck connect there so you know that at the end of these you have your ears which gives you a very good placement for the rest of your neck or your head so if you're ever wondering how to connect your head to your thing, it's like that. Now, this, the distance between the neck and the bottom of, uh, of your neck is the difference between... It's going to sound super weird. That's the little clavicle point right here. If you ever want to know how long to draw your neck, it's the same distance from here back here and from here to down here and you can tell that by just bending your neck it touches that little area unless you have a really tiny chin and you know that's the case just adjust for that but that's normally how i figure out how long my neck should be if i'm trying to keep to like uh, realistic proportions now from here you draw two little wingies like a little you know like how we draw birds like how we draw birds in the sky, you're gonna draw that for on the clavicle, and that's going to be your shoulders. <laughs> and it works in every side and perspective. Uh, let's say we have this clavicle, neck muscles, neck, blah blah blah. Boom, boom. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so incredibly easy to draw shoulders and the neck area now. Ah, you guys couldn't see it. Let me draw another one over here. So we have a rib cage, a little clavicle, and then birdie shape, birdie shape. And then that's the shoulder, that's the shoulder. Neck connects to the ears. Doom, whee! But this part is so easy. And then if you want to bring your shoulders down, just draw that going down. And then you have your shoulders down here and you know where to draw your neck still. It's so easy when you visualize it like that. So uh, I'll have to make a whole lesson on that later on. Um, yeah. But just know I kind of figured out how to draw that stuff so now it's only a matter of time before you guys do uh let me go back to the chat cartoon fighter hey rod gun cartoon fighter i'm watching you from hungary oh that's awesome that's so far away <laughs> Andre Burke, sup Rod, Dre Tunes here, what's up Dre Tunes, Marina Litchi, a really big thank you for simplifying anatomy. Well, you know, I was very uh, not good at it, uh, so I took it upon myself to try to uh, make it easier, not just for myself, but for everyone, because Jesus, like, it's such an important part. And, you know, it's so weird to me that everybody sees it as, like, the boring thing to learn. Like, to me, it's so weird that people see it as a boring thing to learn. Like, ever since I started actually focusing on doing it properly, I have, uh, I have improved so much, so quick because of that. So, like... If you think it's boring, that's what's holding you back. 
Like, if you think anatomy and perspective are boring, you probably have a deficiency in those areas, and it would help you a ton to learn it. Uh, I recently found out that for a front view neutral pose, the length of the neck is around the same as the one from the point of the nose to the chin. So if we have... If we have... What is it? The nose to the chin. So we have a nose. And we have a chin. We have a mouth. <laughs> right? So the distance from the nose to the chin would be the same distance for the neck. Interesting. Those are the neck muscles that go. We're going to draw a little, little wingies for our shoulders and neck. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. I'll have to keep that one in mind. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, tip of the nose. I mean, that's still pretty accurate, even if it's off by like a millimeter. I'm studying the shoulder a few minutes before you explain it. Uh, nice. Is anatomy one of the most important things in art? It's not. Not in all art. I mean, it's it's the most useful thing in certain types of art. I think for animation, it's absolutely necessary. Uh, I think for any sort of character design job, it's absolutely necessary. I don't think it's even a consideration to be able to do those sorts of jobs without the knowledge in those fields. Uh, if you don't know perspective, you cannot do background design. You can't do storyboards. You can't do a lot. You know, and without the knowledge of, you know, anatomy, you, you can do a lot of things. You can be a really cool graphic designer. You can be a, you know, abstract painter. You can be a background painter. You can be anything you want. You can still create a ton of different things. But, I mean, if your job that you want to pursue is in those fields, fantastic. But if it's not, if it's something like character design or animation or storyboarding or even kids books like I worked for a company that you know published a lot of them and I edited uh, I think it was almost over a hundred books for that company and I promise you not a lot of people knew what they were doing uh, it, it was very uh, interesting to see people that you know, just created the idea from their head with as much, like, little basic knowledge as they could. A lot of the times, it's not very appealing art, but sometimes you do get some winners. Some really cool and, like, interesting ones. It's going to present the problem. Might have to change the way the tail comes out. It's gonna have to go back into the distance. There you go. There you go. All right, so we have our general pose, we have our general character, and now we can go in and start uh, stylizing it a little bit and, you know, going over the final passes of the character design process. So in this case, I think I'm going to go with, like, a baggy pants. Uh, no, they wouldn't have baggy pants. Punk rock girls just wear, like, the apple bottom jeans thingies, I think. I think. <laughs> like I said, this is probably knowledge from, like, the punk scene back when I was in high school. So, And that was, like, 20 years ago. So I'm an old geezer now. Like, so all this is just retro stuff to you guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, anatomy is not the most important thing in art. Uh, I, I wouldn't, mean, like, but it depends on what field you're going for. If you're going for anything with comic books, 
you bet your sweet butt that that's going to be a, a really important one. Uh, if you're trying to do anything with 3D modeling, you better understand perspective, otherwise you're not going to be able to make it really far. You know, it's just... Uh, you just gotta uh, master the things that you need for what you wanna be, a, you know, be known for. See, uh, it says, um, sorry, I, I don't understand uh, like the, how to pronounce your name, but anatomy and perspective allow you to make your art believable. It's kind of a way to make people relate to your art. You won't need it for abstract painting. Honestly, abstract painting, I'll never really understand it. I, I just I just don't get it. I do not understand it. And like high art, like what I like to call high art, uh, I don't get it. I don't know how uh, putting a banana peel represents uh, today's uh, culture and society grading and all that stuff. I, I do not understand. And at the end of the day, sometimes I do believe that, like, you know, it's kind of devaluating, like, art from people that have, like, worked really hard, really hard to create what they've, uh, they've created. So, you know, that, that might be an unpopular, like, you know, point of view, but, um... A canvas with a square in the middle. <laughs> like I went to the museum the other day, and it was like a like contemporary. I think contemporary art museum. I don't know what they are called. Like what that type of art is called. But some of the stuff was ridiculous, man. Like, like I just don't understand it. And my lack of understanding should not mean that it's bad. I just don't understand it enough to be able to uh, quantify the, the awesomeness that it's supposed to be. Uh, so if one of you guys can explain that to me like in the chat or something, uh, I'd enjoy that. Okay, let's see. Alright. The next pass should probably be the last pass that we do to this character. Okay? So let's just try to aim to do uh, finished line work when it comes down to this one. And this is when we're going to start adding details, so we're going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to go with a slightly smaller brush. And uh, let's go with an inking, like a vector brush. Yeah, let's do that. The vector layers are really fun for inking because you can... Whenever you're drawing, if you have intersecting lines, Let's say I wanted to draw those like that, right? I can go in and delete just the intersecting lines by just adjusting the, the settings here. I should probably do that right now. Okay. Okay, there. So now whenever I draw something, I can delete the intersecting line simply by just clicking on it. And it's going to help with the inking incredibly, incredibly fast. So with drawings like this, I do prefer to start with the face. Mostly because that's the most um, detail-oriented part of the, of the drawing. We're gonna go with some heavy makeup. So we're gonna just draw some heavier lines. Okay, so I slowly start building up the lines. I essentially approach my digital art very much so like I do my ballpoint pen drawings. 
Uh, in order to get nice clean lines, I tend to draw slowly and just go over the lines over and over and over. Until I get the desired look. So in little sections, even for long lines like that. And it's fine if it's not absolutely perfect too. Like it's the importance that we've put on having perfection in our lines sometimes leads to our drawings looking pretty stiff. So it's just, uh, you have to understand that your sketches have a lot of energy a lot of energy to them all the lines that are moving and not perfect that's all a lot of energy that you know your drawing has and when you just clean it up with perfect lines unless you add a lot of little details with like thick to thin lines and weight and your drawing is perfectly balanced you know sometimes it does look better to just leave a little bit of the sketching in there Because I know, for example, whenever I go back to my normal, like after I finish sketching or inking and I go back to my just line work, it's very, very, unless I'm inking in Illustrator, which I absolutely love, by the way, uh, unless I'm inking in Illustrator, it's just uh, always like slightly disappointing line work. We're not worrying about the highlight right now. That's something that I'm going to tackle on when I'm doing the colors. This is a stage where I just want to make sure that the line work that I'm setting down is nice and clean. So I don't have to go back in and erase later on. And that it's going to read nice and bold. So any little details like the ear, like the little piercing that I want to do here. You know, stuff like that needs to just be nailed down right now. Even with its little details and cross hatchings and stuff like that that I plan to do to it. You just get it out, do it right the first time so you don't have to worry about going back and changing anything later. Because that's that's what takes forever in digital pieces. It's literally going in and like taking a million attempts to get the same thing done. We can't forget about the little flyaway hairs because that was the whole purpose of this whole thing. So we're gonna go back to my sketch there. Just gonna add a couple. And with these, I'm just going to leave the overlapping shapes because it just looks like an extra little hair just flying out there. So I'm just going to leave that there. 
Okay. From here. Acceptable first line. Yes. And for all you digital artists, you know how hard it is to get something on the first try like that. So uh, if you guys can leave a little emoji on there on the chat, uh, congratulating me on the first line thing, that'd be great. <laughs> and if you guys don't do digital, uh, digital art, oh my god, sometimes it takes forever to get a clean line. Even with uh, all the experience. Okay. In this sense, I'm using clever use of overlapping lines to make it look like the hair is going to go back into the rest of the head. Right, so we're going to try to make it look like the hair is going that way. Oh <laughs> yeah, you guys understand my pain. It's nice to know I'm around my people. We know each other's pain. <laughs> is that is that, is that a dab? I'm old. Is that it? If it's it, leave a leave a little like or something. I don't know. I don't know what what do people ask for in chats anymore. I'm old. I don't know this stuff. <laughs> you guys gotta help me out there. <laughs> okay, let's see. So for all the hairs. We're going to do overlapping lines. There you go. And then we're just going to erase the ones that we don't want. Okay, let's see. Let's get rid of all the intersecting lines we don't need. And you'll see why I love this tool so much. Like how easy was that? <laughs> uh, nope, it's not from there. It's from here. Dokes. And then the last thing is the white stripe. But the white stripe will be done in color. So it's not a big bold line in the middle of her face. And draw the lower jaw. Is this a dab train? <laughs> uh, perfect. Nice dab rod. I. What does that even mean? Like, what does dabbing like represent? I am completely ignorant to uh, everything in social media and culture. So, if one of you guys can uh, let me know what that actually means, then that'd be cool. Okay. So I lied. We're gonna make one more layer, so we can figure out her clothing. So, I know that she's going to have a vest, so that's a must. Okay, so she's going to have a vest. Then her vest is going to be like... A denim vest. They tend to have collars. Then we're gonna give her like a. Should we give her a tube top? Like a tank top or something. That way we can. 
give her an indication, even though we're not drawing them, drawing a slight indication of breasts, because it's still a female character, so we still have to uh, make sure that it comes clear as that. It doesn't have to be like gigantic breasts, like everybody thinks that they have to draw. But Okay, so we have that. that, we have the vest going around, we can draw something cute right here, you know, to balance out the fact that she is going to be uh, a little bit dark. Going into her jeans. And she would have a little bit of her fur showing. Maybe a bit belly button ring. Uh, the vests, pockets. Probably have like a bunch of band patches. I think that's a thing. I don't know. Oop -doop -doop. Then we have we have to figure out her pants situation. Now we can go two ways. We can give her pants, or we can give her shorts, or we can uh, just draw like some like camo pants no not camo pants like the big baggy ones with like the no but that's more like a raver isn't it hmm, hmm. okay uh boo -boo 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 -boo. this punk skunk reminds me of disney uh, it reminds me of like the secret of nymph a little bit <laughs> A little bit, for sure. It has those vibes. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're gonna draw the legs. One like up, one like that. You know, she's just a straight up punk rock chick. She doesn't need to be like, like overly sexualized. So we're just gonna draw some like, you know, some baggy, skater jeans and that's what she's going to be wearing with like holes on have the hole for our feet and we gotta determine uh, what kind of feet we're gonna be drawing so are we gonna be giving her like uh, you know no I'm gonna draw Converse I like Converse shoes but how do we draw them here properly would they be going into perspective would they be going into into perspective right here and then maybe this one like resting on the floor there you go that, that looks okay if you're wondering what I'm doing right there I am curving the foot so it curves in because the big toe is in the front right so when you draw feet normally want to draw that big toe area first so that's why they angle towards the front you know always angle your toes or your shape of your shoes towards the inside so that it looks proper yeah a punk with a frappuccino <laughs> So there you go, and I'm gonna have like the high tops coming out from the top, 
maybe just from one side. And then like an untied shoelace or something. There you go. That looks fun. Okay, now we go into the arms. The arms will be relatively easy because I don't have them doing anything particularly crazy. In this case, I just want to make sure that I leave a little gap in between here so that it doesn't lose the silhouette. So it still looks like something bending over. That's going to determine that my arms are going to be relatively skinny. Poofy shoulders. I'm going to have the rest of the shirt going in there into very cartoony hands. So straight up, almost like Mickey Mouse, like mitten type of hands. But since it's, I don't, honestly, I don't know if skunks have a claws, but I'm just going to give her some because she's fierce. So we have that, now we have the bottom of our frappuccino into perspective, even though it's not it's not perfect perspective, it's just basic, a super basic perspective, but you know, adding a little bit of that adds so much to your drawings. So learn it. Until I make videos about perspective and how to like fix it, you guys need to learn that on your own. And this one's gonna have boba. Okay, so we have our character pretty much. Okay, I need you guys, uh, we're going to take a little break here because my hand is uh, cramping up again. So I need you all to leave uh, good, fun questions for me to answer. Okay, hold on. There you go. So we already have that. So we're going to go into that sketch. So that just means that we got to ghost this a little bit more. This one a little bit less. Okay, so I've never tried boba tea before. Um, boba tea is really n nice if you like tapioca and you like um, gushy, smushy things in your drinks. So if you like textures, it's really, really fun. And I, I like it. It tastes good. Alright, let's see. Hold on. So you have that. We can also make her hair into like a mullet, which I kind of like. I just saw that right now, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Okay. Are you going to make some Clip Studio videos? Um, what would you like to learn from Clip Studio? It's, um... What I like to tell people is that they should... If you're looking into getting into digital art, learn Photoshop. Photoshop will teach you everything. Now, after, take those 30 day free trial periods, learn Photoshop. After that, get rid of the Photoshop if you don't really need it for work and get Clip Studio, which is a million times cheaper. This is a good substitute, but the industry standard is Photoshop. So learning Clip Studio, and then imagine you get a job at a big, like a place because you know your work is amazing it's going to be very stressful for you never having used photoshop before it's just not a very easy program to learn if you have never uh, used it and since it's so standard 
people will expect you to know it at a master level. So it's it's something that I always, uh, you know, like going into things like paint sci and stuff like that. It's it's something that I wish I did more because there are the free programs that uh, people can afford. But at the same time, I've never, ever, ever met an employer that used those programs ever. So it's it's not something that since my my whole uh, I'm just trying to teach people how to make it in the industry, you know, like how to achieve their like dreams. And that involves learning the industry standard sometimes. You know, I think I made the video with uh, some of the best skill sets to learn if you want to be a successful digital artist. And it's one of the last streams that I did. And I think that is one of the, like the strongest things that you need to learn. Like, because that is kind of like the template for everything else that like anybody else releases. All right, let's draw some denim. So denim has a thickness to it. So the reason that I'm not going all the way to the edge with these like that is because it does have some depth. So you wouldn't see that stark of a contrast. You would see it going into a fold. And even though it's a very minuscule detail, little tiny details like that over the whole piece will give you a very, very, very large sense of depth that you normally don't get. So it's just uh, learning when and how to use contrast to create different textures is very key too, especially if you want to become a storyboard artist or a comic book artist. Um, you need to learn how to draw textures and uh, understand how to make things look like textures without really drawing the texture. Now, denim, again, doesn't really give many wrinkles, but, you know, you can draw a couple overlapping lines to create a depth, uh, a little bit of depth in, in the shape. Okay, one side. Hmm. What side is the best for women? Button, no button. Okay, so buttons are on this side, I think, for women. And then the slits are on this side for men. For women. I think, I think, I might be wrong. At this point, I'm going to add little details like the stitching. And that could just be as simple as little dashes. Also, I want to add the little details like the pockets and the stitching for the pockets. This is where anatomy comes into play and it's not going to seem like a lot, but it's really important. Uh, the shoulder muscle and the breast muscle interact like this, like the shoulder overlaps the chest muscle. And then from there you have the side of your lats. So you got to figure out that side of the body at one point or another. That's how you kind of figure it out. 
Now, if this is supposed to be a tank top or a tube top, it would also have the edge right there. And then it would go back in. And it would probably have like a tear or something. I remember that girls used to do that. All right, so we have our vest, we have our t-shirt, uh, we have our shoulders, we have all that already. We're gonna draw the white parts with, um, with color. So now we're gonna go into our shoulder, make them furry. Into the bicep. Okay, this one, the bicep ends there, and then the forearm wraps around the arm. Now we don't have to draw all that, really, but it's good to know. One curved side, one straight side. It's a very, very good um, rule to uh, draw your arms or your limbs with. So if you see that there's a bendy curve, one side should have curved lines, one side should have straight lines. And that rule tends to be very like applicable in most cases. But like always, it's, a, it's not a rule set in stone, so if it doesn't look right, don't do it. You know, it's just common sense. Um, I'm gonna go into the arms. Now arms and hands are very tricky and there's so many different components to them. Learning how to draw them simple is not as easy as people think. It's very hard learning all the mechanics and how to make them look appealing. But luckily for you guys, there's a bunch of tutorials out there. And I think I did a couple through one of my, some of my streams. So I highly recommend you guys pay attention to whenever uh, anyone is explaining them because everybody sees them differently. Honestly, like just like with heads, um, normally drawing hands is a very uh, style-centric thing. So sometimes it's easier to just observe someone draw them until and then be able to like replicate that until you're able to understand them enough where you can draw them stylized yourself i for example studied a bunch of animation uh to be able to draw simple cartoon hands uh mostly because i was working as a caricature artist and i needed to be able to draw very very simple things the vector line is perfect for situations like this. You're gonna see why. I can draw the entire shape and then just go in and delete the intersections. That, uh, that was like the easiest cup I have ever drawn. And a lot of this stuff um, I've drawn before, so that's why I'm able to just come up with it on the spot. Uh, you don't see me looking for references as to how like a lid is supposed to look or you know how like a vest is supposed to drape over like a person's body. Uh, that all comes with just practice and drawing over and over again. And then drawing outside of your comfort zone is a very big key too. We all like to stay within our comfort zones. But they're called comfort zones for a reason. Because they're comforting. It's not necessarily going to make you a better artist.
You need to push yourself if you want to become a better artist. Um, and that comes from just understanding different things. And that comes from drawing different things. And that comes from, you know, messing up a lot. And you shouldn't be afraid to mess up. Because messing up is uh, how we all learn. But we're going to make it an evil bunny because she's punk rock. So we'll call it Anarchy Bunny. Hey, Anarchy Bunny is here to stay. And that's gonna be there. So now we move on to the belly button ring and that of course is gonna be a Pokeball. Because it's the only acceptable uh, belly ring to use. Then we're going to have the little tears from the pants that go around the leg into the pants themselves. A couple folds. Yeah, Pokeball. Okay, you know what? I like Pokemon. I have Pokemon tattooed on me. So, uh, yeah. A Pokeball is a very acceptable uh, uh, belly button ring. At least if you feel like... If anybody feels like being appealing to me, that's how they would get me. Like, if a girl showed up with a belly button ring, like, with a Pokemon on it, told me that she was into ghost types, and, um, she, uh, does Nuzlocke's of Pokemon <laughs> for fun, yeah, uh, that, that's my type of gal. <laughs> What are you guys saying? I, I play Pokemon Go every day, so it's perfect. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna add some uh, seams to the pants. Uh, we said that one of the sides of the shoe was gonna be out. The tongue of the foot should never be just straight up up like it's such a waste of uh, a little flappy area like you should always try to aim to add as many flappy areas to your 
to your joints. <laughs> and then this side's gonna be covered with the pants. Do, 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 do. Okay, so are you gonna make some clip studios? What's a good name for a skunk punk rock band? Um, oh man, I don't know. It would have to be something with smell, right? So it'd be like, uh, smell these nuts or something. <laughs> or, uh, waft. Oh wow, the wind is strong tonight. Um, I don't know if you guys heard that, but it like shook my whole house. <laughs> okay. Boom. Shoelace. Going across. Shoelace. Going across. Shoelace. Going across. And then instead of going through there, it's going to go through the outlet. And it's going to just go on to the side. And the same thing here would be going out right there, but probably from here, so going that way, you'd see that, and then you'd see it going this way. There you go. And that's how you draw little runaway shoelaces. I've always been a Converse guy. Um, I don't know why. They're not particularly the most comfy shoes. But I've always just really, really liked the way that they have the white front. I know it's a silly, silly reason to just like an entire company of shoes. <laughs> but I just really enjoy having those uh, front tops. And... Uh, that was my first introduction to um, to uh, half calf shoes, so that was really uh, I got to thank them for that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Maybe the the fold here is way too long to big compared to the other side. Don't do it. Right. All right, it's looking pretty good. Almost done. I'm gonna draw the other foot. Oh, almost. Ah, uh, yeah. I oh, call it. That was that was a good one. Only messed up by me drawing the ankle wrong. There you go. Heavy shade, and then for this one, we're only gonna draw the lip. Because you wouldn't see the rest of the foot, and we're gonna draw the bottom side of the of the shoes. Maybe give her like a little hole or something. Okay, so let's connect the lines. See how our character is looking. It's looking pretty cool, if you don't uh, mind me saying so. All right, so we have that. Now we gotta draw the straw. If you're wondering what I did there, here, in order to make it look like it's going through something plasticky, you don't draw that little tiny gap right there. You do the same thing with glasses. 
and it tends to look pretty okay. Match the line work so it doesn't look weird, and there you go. Okay, 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 and now it's just the tail that's left, and I see the tail is a little bit off. So we gotta move that tail a little bit before we do anything with it. Alright, so we have that. This one's the tail. So we're gonna match it with the bottom of our hips, which is right there. Let's see what it would look like if we just make it a little smaller. What if we put it behind her and then just Hmm. I kind of like this because then it's not going to be overly big, but I might have to make this a little bit smaller and then change the way that it's curving. Hmm. Hold on. I'm gonna try this and then I'm just gonna adjust it. Alright. Yeah, that looks better. Sometimes just drawing lines that flow with the design also help you explore what the right lines are supposed to be. Uh, some people commented with uh, the Velma sketch that I did and I posted on TikTok that it was very messy and very, uh, like, I don't know, like, people just, I think, assume that lines just magically appear right to artists. And that's not the case. Uh, Sometimes it's a struggle just like figuring out exactly what lines to draw. So, you know, having a messy sketch is not a bad thing. Okay, so in this case, we have the tail coming out right here. So we know that that's there. And then it goes. Ah, oh, that was close. No. That's acceptable. That is acceptable. Because I can just correct. Alright. Perfect. Not quite. Not Okay, back in the day, back in college, sometimes it would take me up to like five to ten minutes to get a circle exactly how I wanted it. And I guess that just makes me a very, very, uh, very bad digital artist at first. But as you can see, I'm still terrible at it. Yeah. And then the rest is going to be in line work, so. Okay. So now that we have all our line work, we can get rid of that. Let's get rid of the little tiny fly hairs that we have here. So strengthening our lines. We don't have to be perfect on the tail because it's hair, so, you know, some lines would be sticking out anywhere. Um, the next step that I like to take is to add a little element of a shadow underneath my character to ground them. It could be as simple as just a black shadow that just fits underneath them. I 
if you want to be more accurate, make sure that you follow kind of what you are, you know, drawing on top. But just an element of a ground shadow is going to help you ground your character so it looks like it's actually on the ground. I don't know. To me, that is a very important aspect of my drawings. To some people, it's not, but to me, it is. So I am giving you guys that tip. Now, let's go into color. So I'm going to make a new layer. I don't like coloring my black and white things black and white, as you guys are pretty well aware when it comes down to my pandas and stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the whole character with pink. So I'm going to make it a pink punk rocking um, skunk. Now let's see if we can do this the easy way by selecting my line work, selecting all the edges with the magic wand tool with the vector um, with the vector tool it's very easy because it always leaves perfect you know like clean edges so that's one more aspect of the tool that I absolutely love there you go so that was incredibly easy uh, now what we do on top of this is we are going to Can you make clip layers? Hmm. Clip to layer below. Let's see if that does it. No. Okay. Yay! Okay, it does. So we're going to set up a layer that has just a clipping mask on top of the other one. And this one's going to be our white layer. I'm going to go in and try to follow the guidelines of where we drew our hair lines. Obviously the eyes. Uh, the tail is going to have a couple markings. So it's going to go from like here. There you go, something like that. Okay, no refine. Have I said how learning perspective would help? Well, being able to visualize it better, maybe I wouldn't be straining so much. <laughs> right now with that much. Okay, let's delete that. Let's make this up a little smoother. And let's get the wide end for the converse soles. And there is a drawback to drawing something, you know, white on top of a, a white background. But since we're clip masking it, it doesn't matter. So you can't draw outside of the initial shape that you drew. So. Okay, Anarchy Bunny will be white. And she's going to have... A little bit of chest puff and belly puff. Mm. 
Then we have the whipped cream. This side, the tooth. And other than that, I think that's all the white. So now at that point, just go in and refine the shapes that you need. Having them follow the guidelines of what we already drew before. So we already do those little guidelines so we would know when the hair is slicking back to the side. Just like that. There you go. Building our character up little by little. all right so after this we're just gonna go in with a slightly darker uh, like a darker pink is gonna be our go-to here so we're gonna make a new layer we're gonna clip this one too layer settings and let's see if this works yay it works hmm hmm am i gonna have to go with that color I think I'm gonna have to go with the color that's really dark like that. Okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, she's gonna have white inside the ears. Uh, where else? Where else? Where else is there white? Mm, oh, no, no. Okay, that same color. We can probably make her vest or her pants that same color, but I think it's a really dark color for those areas. So we're gonna avoid that. We're gonna go with a bright red for her shoes. Bright red for the shoes. That part would also be white, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adding the little star. So this is the it's like the time that you take your time and you figure out what little details are supposed to be colored, what color details are not supposed to be colored, uh, what why you can skimp on detail, where you have to add it. And little by little, your whole piece comes together. When you can't decide on the color, just put in any color. You can always color correct it later. But having just something there that's done is going to just be incredibly helpful to you. It's easier to always change than to, than to do initially. Okay, what is that line right there? That's not anything. That's supposed to be the shoelace. There you go. 
sometimes just starting the project and starting the section or starting uh, anything you're drawing is like the most important thing. Even if you're not ready, just starting it will get you to the finish line quicker. So whenever you find yourself stuck and you don't know what to do, uh, just put that pen on pencil and then or pencil on the canvas and then just go at it. Sooner or later, something will click. Okay, okay. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh -huh. Let's see. What kind of drink can we see her drinking? And her shirt is going to be like black, right? Something like that. Like a dark color. So let's try to see what it's going to look like if we change the color of the clothes a little bit. So we're going to... Blue looks okay. Let's see what, what a gray looks like. Oh, I'm liking gray. Yeah, I'm liking the gray. Okay. Gray stays. The gray also helped us identify little tiny areas that we had not filled in. Little tiny spots that at the end when you get the you know, like your drawing printed and stuff end up looking wrong. So shifting colors sometimes helps. Okay, now we need to do the patches and the boba. So for the boba, we're going to delete that part because we don't need it. Uh, we're going to make the lid. The lid will be like enough white. The, it's going to be underneath. What color drink would you drink? See, I'd say something black, <laughs> but she's already uh, pretty dark and spooky, so I'm going to uh, make her something purplish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bunch of gradients to the, to the purple area to give it the appearance of being more interesting than just a blob of pink or purple or violet or whatever you want to call it so once you have your drink like that just erase everything else. okay so the first thing I gotta do is I gotta color everything that has any depth a slightly darker color so the straw the underside of the uh, cream and even like the parts that overlap kind of like the the extra layers of plastic can be taken into consideration after that you go and you use your brush and then you create a very soft gradient it could be as easy as just clicking it a couple times and then erasing the parts that you don't need It might not seem like a lot was done with that, but the visual representation within the cup is going to be incredibly enhanced once we add highlights. So once we add you know, highlights to this guy, 
Oh, it's because I'm drawing. And I don't know if I would want to add soft highlights. Uh, yeah, hard highlights are better. Hmm. Okay. There you go. At this point, I can go in and add highlights to all the parts that are going to require highlights anyways. Little tiny parts that I know eventually are going to require. I can add them right now. Since I'm already doing it in one of my pieces, you don't need to go back and do it over again later on. Okay, so we have our highlights. That's Oh, it's real boba, line mark, shadows, and then these are the clipping masks. Okay. All right, so let's just finish up uh, our piece by creating the eyes, extra pieces of jewelry that I might have forgotten, extra little parts like nails and maybe uh, hold on where's the white okay. so let's see I'm like considering adding some streaks of pink to the top, kind of like this. Which would kind of help with the transition to make it a little bit smoother. And I know that goes against the simplifying principle that I explained, but I think it looks cool. I'm gonna do the same thing with the tail. I'm gonna add little flickies that's the only way that I can describe it to make it look like it's here. All right. And just like that, I think we have a pretty solid character. Now, the last thing that we want to do is we want to create an extra background there. We want to create a shape with an interesting color. Let's do that. Let's fill that up and reduce the opacity a little bit. And like that, we have a very interesting, very fun uh, little character. Now we have a lot of monotone tones there. So a little bit of shadows would go a long way. I like to make my shadows by making a multiply layer, making it into like 20% opacity, choosing a blue or a darker blue color. And that's just a preference, but I just enjoy it like that. And then I block in all my shadows. The first thing I do is block them in, and then after that, I smooth out the things that I need to smooth out. But this is the first step going into that. I tend to add shadows only where it's absolutely necessary, not just all over the place, wherever it's going to make the contrast stick out the most and where it's actually appropriate when it comes down to like actual lighting. I like to do this step relatively quick. Don't like to overthink it too much. And I use a lot of uh, basic shape knowledge to be able to understand where it's supposed to be going. And I explained all this in uh, previous videos too. So if you guys want to uh, learn more about that, that's uh, one way to go. About it. Okay. 
Okay, so that's pretty much it. And then I can go in and I can smooth things out with the smudge tool or the blend tool and then just smooth out the parts that I want more roundness in. For example, the eyes are right there. Anything that's going to define shape, I normally smooth a little bit out so it's nice and smooth. One last thing I noticed is that I did not fill in her little patches and stuff. So let's do that. All right, and just like that, we have a pretty interesting, pretty fun character uh, that came across just having a conversation with uh, one of my friends. And she's lovely, and she had a couple fly hairs. So she mentioned that it would look like a punk skunk. So I drew a punk skunk. <laughs> Odds are that if you're my friend or somebody that I care about, you're going to end up getting things drawn for you. So, I highly encourage you to become my friend. <laughs> Anyways, here's your punk little girl for a day. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Let's uh, read this things. Choo choo choo. Waft punks. <laughs> Any chance on how to determine where to put your thick to thin lines? Thick to thin lines are essentially a light source, so wherever the shadow is hitting, that's where the shadow would be, that's where you would make it darker. Uh, tips, uh, any times for how to determine? I love how messy sketches. <laughs> it's like you're letting the imagination go freely, obviously not dictation. Uh, hello everybody, I have advice for inking. One, the closer the thicker. Kinda, I guess. Uh, too thin when it stretches, thin in the curves. It's the same thing, I guess. Uh, Rod, what do you think? Yeah, those are interesting techniques. Uh, I'd have to actually put them into uh, play because I don't think I've ever done them like that. Uh, Fallon Reaper, I prefer using 50% gray for my backgrounds. It helps a bit seeing the dark and light areas easier. See, I like that too, contrasting-wise, but I always find that... I have to push myself with color a little bit, otherwise I don't end up using color properly down the line. Uh, green drink? Hey, why not? Maybe it's like uh, tea or something. <laughs> I finished this mine's. Uh, this was a fun prompt. Well, everybody, uh, thank you all so much for joining my stream. I think that uh, that's going to be it for today. My books are on sale like they are every week. And this one just got a bunch of goop on it. But it's also available for sale as an ebook and digital download. Uh, you can go onto my website on Instagram and you guys can support me that way. But until then, you guys don't have to. Don't worry, it's fine. I know you guys love me anyways. But I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for making the start of my week awesome, like always. Uh, please go over to my Instagram and support there. TikTok as well. I'll be posting a little bit more there eventually at some point. I'm pretty sure. And if you are interested at all in buying my pinup book or my Coffee Break Doodles book, you can find them in my link in my Instagram. Tags are Rodgon the Artist for everything, and I love you all. Have a wonderful night, and keep on doodling. <laughs>